So, hello folks. Uh, my name is Neil Gampa. I am the chair of this, of the KD SIG, and I'm here to talk to you about how I brought KD, Fedora KD from the dead. Um, this is a little bit about me. Some of you faces, uh, I don't think I've seen you before, so I'll just kind of quickly go through this. I do lots of stuff in open source, um, and as a consequence of that, I have lots of bullet points uh, on this slide. These are not enough bullet points because I decided to leave some out because I was working on this deck. That's not all of them, it's because I didn't have enough time to finish filling out everything. Um, so, but the important thing from this perspective is uh, I'm a member of KDE, I'm a member of Fedora, CentOS, uh, Alma, and a bunch of other places. I'm a co-host on the Pseudo Show podcast. I also have my own business, Velocity Limitless, where I operate as a principal consultant on open source software, particularly around solutions like Fedora KDE and stuff like that. Um, so talking about Fedora KDE, introduction here, it's the Fedora KDE SIG is the special interest group that uh, create packages and maintains the Qt stack and the KDE software ecosystem for Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, starting with RHEL 8. We develop and maintain variants of Fedora media with KDE software on it. We also have a lovely little brochure website that says Fedora loves KDE. And we do love KDE. So, and speaking of KDE, when we're talking about KDE, we're talking about the KDE Plasma platform. And so this is a modern, feature-rich environment that is, uh, that is available for Linux-based operating systems with subset of its stack that even work on Windows and Mac and Android and all these other places. Um, it's super sleek, it's awesome. It's what's running in here. I have it customized. It looks kind of like a Mac because I actually like this look and feel, but you can do whatever you want. Um, it's built on top of the KD frameworks and Qt. So let's go, let's start with the backstory here. So this is, you're gonna see this Fedora Loves KD logo in various shades of whatever because I'm gonna come up with better iconography to represent like the different phases of the, of the KD SIG. So it's like, all right, if I shade this in and out, it'll, it'll be enough. It, 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 it'll be enough. This slide, these slide templates really want you to have an image next to all of your text. And so I always have to come up with something. But so Fedora KD is the beginnings, actually started uh, before Fedora existed. Um, it started as the KD on Red Hat project. Um, Rex Dieter, who is the founder of the SIG, has, uh, created that project way back when. Um, when, Fedora, when Red Hat acquired the Fedora Linux project and merged it with the Red Hat Linux project to create the Fedora project that we know today. Yes, I'm saying project a lot because that, that, that happened. Um, it resulted in the creation of a thing called Fedora Core. And then there was also the stuff that came from the Fedora Linux project which became Fedora Extras. Sometime a little bit before Fedora 7, it was agreed that we were going to merge the two into the one big Fedora that we have today. And as part of that, a whole bunch of community outreach kind of happened at around the same time. And one of the outcomes of that is that the KD on Red Hat project merged into the Fedora project and became the Fedora KD SIG. It was one of the first special interest groups in Fedora. One of the other cool things about Fedora KD is that it was the first spin that ever existed. Uh, the Fedora Live CD technology was actually prototyped and developed and the first spin that was created this way was with Fedora KDE. So we were pioneers in the way that everything is now done in Fedora. Um, we brought in, of course, we were with KDE 3 back then and we moved into KDE 4 in 2008. Everyone knows how KDE 4 went. We're just not, we're just gonna skip past that and go into the Plasma 5 years. <laughs> yeah. If you weren't here for KD4, you're better off not being here for KD4. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the best I can, I can go with. So, but, and, but that was actually one of the more engaged periods for, for Fedora KDE. Um, but during this time frame with the KD4 era, um, there was this uh, upstream chair deci decision to start breaking things up, componentizing them, and life cycling them independently. This became the KD software compilation, which then became the KD frameworks, gear, and, app, and plasma that we know today. Um, this effectively is the downturn for the Fedora KD SIG uh, because once Fedora Next goes live, and in fact for Fedora 21, um, the Workstation Working Group had also simultaneously elected that they weren't going to provide a KDE variant. And so Fedora KDE, uh, so the KDE experience stopped being on the front page in 2014 with Fedora 21. Um, at the time that this happened, 
the spins website wasn't actually live. So there were people like that. We, we had a sharp drop in interest and engagement from the wider community because it wasn't visible. Then the getfedora.org brochure website went live in 2015. And that still didn't put Fedora KD on the front page anywhere. Um, it was actually at the bottom third under the fold where you could find a link to go to the spin site that listed Fedora KD Plasma there. Yeah, it's a pretty common story from you know, in the audience. Someone mentions that you know they did they started in 2018, they couldn't find it. That was a pretty common story. Uh, there were plenty of people that were confused, like, oh, this is Workstation, but I don't like GNOME and I want KDE. And it's like, <sighs> yes, I know, everyone knows this is a problem. Um, but we did Plasma 5 with Fedora 22 uh, in 2015, and right after that was done, um, one of the founding members of the KDE SIG quits out of frustration and burnout. Um, it was Kevin Koffler, and after the transition was complete, he basically yeeted himself out of the SIG, orphaned, all of, uh, orphaned his privileges out of this whole stack, and uh, the following year, I joined the SIG. Uh, no one really cares. Uh, <laughs> it, I just am kind of there. I kind of help with a little bit of stuff here and there. Um, new releases get packaged and shipped, but the energy in the community kind of joined us away. There was other things that were going on uh, at the time, um, not by, like, in the surrounding community space that was making it unappealing for people to come in, and it was essentially draining away the interest and drive in supporting KDE in, in Fedora. It actually had gotten to a point where Fedora KDE's release blocking status almost got revoked. And if that had happened, we probably wouldn't have ever gotten it back, because by this point in time, the rules had changed that only additions could have it. Fedora KDE's release blocking status, which makes it co-primary with GNOME, is a legacy thing. We have it as a compromise as part of moving to Fedora next. Um, so it was very important to retain it, and so... What was Fedora next? Okay, so Fedora next is this idea from Matthew Miller about uh, 12 years ago. Um, goes along with the rings thing that he was showing off at in the, in the keynote, is, is this idea that you would take a curated collection of content and turn it into a deliverable that you present to people without having to make them go through what he liked to call the salad bar, which is going through Anaconda, selecting the environment groups, and picking the groups of stuff you want to install and figuring out what you actually want to have for your, for your installation. So essentially, changing the default deliverable from the install DVD to live media, which was originally done to compete with Ubuntu. Because Ubuntu, one of their innovations was not giving people a regular installer and just giving people live media that have curated collections and a curated experience that's tested. That's and it is essentially the standard today. This is how everyone does it now, because it is a good idea. A curated experience allows you to put your best foot forward, but it is also a ton more work. So you don't have nearly as many, although, I mean, you could argue Fedora has lots of them because people are actually genuinely interested in the idea of providing an opinionated experience that shows off the best foot of whatever technologies they like. It's great. So that's Fedora Next. The Workstation Working Group was formed out of that, as well as the Server Working Group, the Cloud Working Group. Those were the three originally, and then more came over time. So we fast forward a few years. Things are kind of degrading. And we get to a point where um, it's basically two people working on the whole thing. Troy in the, in, is one, and then Rex is the other. Yeah, uh, so Troy Dawson in the audience and Rex Dieter, who's not here as far as I can tell, were the two people that were primarily doing all of the KD work. There was also Jan Grulich doing the cute stuff, as he always was, and stuff like that. But like for the most part, that was it. Um, and it was just enough effort to keep the lights on, and it wasn't really driving or developing anything. And this is where I kind of, you know, I kind of step in after I, Rex and I finally, like, we, we talk and he, he goes and takes some action to clean up some of the, um, the venues for Fedora KDE because at this point in time, part of the problem was that there were some people that we had repeatedly warned about, you know, poor conduct, that they were ignoring us and they were just reinforcing poor conduct and driving people away from, from the Fedora KDE space. Um, 
we got fed up with it. Rex decided to finally put his foot down on it, and we cleaned up the whole space. And after that, Re things happened to Rex in his life, and he kind of had to step away a little bit, and he let me lead the, the SIG in, in his place. One of the first things I wound up doing was making the governance a little bit uh, more obvious. So we developed a project task tracker. We started actually having regular meetings again. We started trying to come up with a roadmap and a vision for what we wanted to do with Fedora KDE because a directionless group was clearly not working. I mean, it was, it was never going to work. That, it never works in any capacity. But it was definitely not working now. And as part of that, we start getting into building out what we think we need to be doing. So we come up with a roadmap. We decide one of our North Stars is getting the KD Plasma stack full onto Wayland, getting the high quality experiences and, and driving engagement and, and, and driving the future of the KD platform on Fedora. And this excited people. Because now people were very interested in what we were doing. Um, I announced this at Academy to the wider community. I, I did my first talk at Academy um, where I introduced the KD SIG and talked about all this stuff. Um, this brought in a lot of interest from people. And, and, and that actually fed into like having membership growth for the first time in several years. We went from having three people to about seven in the span of one year after that. And uh, oh, you know, this is when Mark, Mark Dupe and a couple of others start joining to do work for the maintenance stuff, which relieves Rex and Troy from having to also do all the Fedora stuff. Um, I start actually taking a little bit more of an active role as well, trying to get some of these things in place to quickly unblock people, because some of it is just really big, complicated stuff. Some of it is bureaucratic stuff and all these other things. And if I can enable them to, to move, quickly to get things done and, and, and be excited about what they're doing, I'll, I'll put up with a lot. Um, and this vision, it drives growth and contributors. But I think the other part that was super awesome about it was that it drove KDE people to come to our platform. They were leaving, they were leaving other platforms to come for us because they said we were doing things that, they, that excited them, that helped them be KDE developers, things like that. And that was really, really satisfying to me because it shows that our strategy was working. And so we kept going on this front. And then the, you know, shortly after that, we got Timothy Ravier coming in, and he brought and made Fedora Kinoite, which is our atomic variant. And we sponsor Academy two years in a row, which I was super happy about, because it was really hard fought to actually get that. We also ha and that's where the Fedora Loves KDE site comes from. Because we sponsored Academy, we had created a brochure site, and we created real life brochures and stickers to take with us to Academy. So I went to Academy in Barcelona in 2022 and, and gave them out to people. We had a booth and everything. It was great. Um, so all that kind of comes around to the state of today. So the state of today is that people on the internet, like if you go search Reddit and whatever, people on the internet will say, that we provide a premier KDE experience, which is something that no one ever said about Fedora KDE in the past decade before. Like that is a real big change. And it's because we have this passionate group of developers and maintainers who are in the core group actively planning, deciding, and engaging. And then we have this extended group of contributing members that come in from other spheres or, or kind of sit along the side and help us make our mission successful. And that has allowed us to do things like offer KDE Plasma with pretty good support on all the architectures. Even the weird mainframes could run now KDE Plasma. Why? Beats me, but you can. But we have priority support for x86 and ARM. And we've engaged with other communities to collaborate and enable KDE-based experiences. Fedora Asahi, Fedora Cloud, Fedora Apple and CentOS and Fedora Scientific, CentOS Hyperscale. I forgot about alt images. I'm sorry, Troy. It's supposed to be on there. Oh, <laughs> um, but we spend a lot of effort to not just be in our, in our circle, but to go out to the other circles and connect with them. This was kind of built on my own personal experience, being involved in a lot of different communities and seeing that if I connect people together, 
we get better solutions and better engagement across the board. And so I have taken every opportunity to help out supporting Fedora KD by reaching out to people and connecting them and finding people who are excited in other places and bringing them together. And that has really helped make our experiences better because people have, they care more about what we're doing. And so that's really the lifeblood of, of any kind of volunteer project. People have to care. And when people feel supported and, and, and they, they, they care about it, they, they put a lot more into it. You know, and that's why we were able to launch KD Plasma 6 with Fedora 40. We were the first release-based distribution to do it, and we had what people on the internet said were the best experience. Of course, I'm, I'm a little biased. I think it is the best experience. Yeah, and what was actually super cool about this is that we were engaged at every step of Plasma 6's development. We were, we were packaging and shipping and testing pre-alpha snapshots and alpha releases and beta releases and release candidates. And we had a really tight feedback loop that led to a really high quality experience. And I, and I want to continue building upon that. And, and the whole team was super happy with how everything came out in the end. And speaking of how it came out in the end, yeah. yeah. Because of all the stuff we were doing, and this was a major version, this was the final execution of our big vision of we want to get to Wayland-only Plasma. We are in the future. And this is the culmination of all this, these changes that we made, which is incidentally over this timeline that I have been involved as the KD SIG lead. And you see that you know, we executed on it and we succeeded. And people, outside of like small groups of people who would rather X11 be around forever, we don't really get any bad press for it. Like, it's, it's been well received. People on the internet say we have some of the best, the best KDE experience, and I'm very proud of the work that, these, that, are, that the SIG has done to make this a reality. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so person in the audience said there was a brief time in Fedora 34 where the Wayland default didn't work for about a month and then it fixed itself. That's because we had this tight feedback loop and when things were breaking, we reached out to them and they helped us fix it. And making Wayland the default in a release blocking desktop in Fedora means I get a lot more actionable bug reports. And that meant we could actually get things moving. And I firmly believe that KDE Upstream could not have done Plasma 6 as Wayland by default if we hadn't done it before, three years before. And the end result of that is we have this awesome experience here. And so what was the secret to this success? Like what, what allowed all of this to, to kind of be a thing? So, it really comes down to embracing and supporting your people. Now, this might seem like it's obvious, but you'd be shocked at how often it comes out to be like, oh, you know, just do whatever, and as long as you don't, you know, just do whatever, and, and as long as you don't screw up, it's fine. But there's one thing of saying that, and then there's another thing of saying, oh, hey, your idea is interesting, or your idea might be not so great, but let's see, let's work through it and, and understand what, what that means. Giving active support to people for both their good and bad ideas um, shows that you that, that you want their opinions and you want their 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 thoughts on how things should go. It helps people feel engaged, makes them feel involved, it makes them feel like they're actually part of it. The 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 core thing I think I struggled to put on this is that I helped people give have ownership of this, so they felt like they were part of it. They felt like. The, like they were, they were an enabler of its success, and they were because it, that's true. But it's really easy to to make it so that they don't feel that and they don't get that. And if they don't have that feeling, they're not really gonna be in for it for the long haul. Um, but then it also comes to the flip side of it: someone has to protect those people from the haters out there because they exist and they suck, and they are a drain on your community. They're a drain. On your, on, on your sustainability, because if you let them basically take over the discourse of your community, it'll fall apart. Because 
it's really that binding connection of ownership, positivity, and, and belonging that, that lets something sustain itself over the long haul. So, and that it also comes to like a, a really other important point is when something is you think is stupid or you know is stupid, don't tell them it's stupid. Teach them how to think about the process and see whether they come to the same conclusion you do. Make rejection a really high bar. Saying no should not be easy. That doesn't mean you shouldn't say no. It means that you have to really think about it and be prepared to justify it. Like people have been asking the KDC to, you know, for example, bring back X11 support. Uh, the, I mean, it, it, it's, it's been a thing for, for more than a hot minute that that would be a thing. But when that comes up and I bring it up to the team and we all talk about it, it goes through thinking about what do we want to do, what do we want to support, where are we, and what are we planning on. And if the group in general doesn't feel like this makes this fits into that story, then, then we don't do it. If there is a reason that it would make sense to fit in the story, then we will think about it. But you know, every single release from Fedora 34 to 40, we always reevaluated the Wayland state. We always talked about the X11 state. We, we worked with upstream to figure it out. Really, the thing that made it so that we finally did the, the Wayland transition was that in Fedora 39, we shipped Orca and the accessibility stack on the image by default, and it worked. That was the big remaining blocker was like, what about blind people? Like, that matters. And because we got to that point and we were constantly thinking about it, we were evaluating it, even though being a Wayland only environment was our North Star, it didn't mean that we weren't thinking about what it takes to get there and evaluating it every step of the way. Once all those goals were crossed, you know, we just did it. And that's why, you know, even if something sounds ludicrous, you should think about it. Because like when I proposed this back in Fedora 32, we didn't, you know, the first changes didn't start landing until 34, but we, we started talking about this all the way back in Fedora 32 in 2020. You know, we had to sit down and have a conversation about it. We had like, you know, the fact that Rex didn't completely throw it out was, Part of the reason why he wound up actually telling me I could go run the SIG was because I had a really good justification about it and I had thought through it. And when we all talked about it, Jan Grulik, Troy Dawson, um, and everyone who was in that meeting, we really, really tried to figure out whether there was a reason not to do it. And we ultimately said, well, there may not be a reason to do it right now but there is definitely no reason not to do it ever. And so we came up with the criteria and we worked towards it. We also solicited feedback from the larger community and we, didn't, we took all of their feedback seriously. And that also, I wasn't the sole person answering and responding and engaging. I had other, everyone on the team was doing it. They all were part of the decision. And that, ena that enabled them to feel like this was also their choice too. So with all of that, I think that is it. Anyone's got questions? I, th I hope I didn't actually go too fast. I tried to pace it right. I have one more question. Yay! I have two questions. Sure. Can we connect work on these make transfers? All right, so the first question. Okay, so the first, the first question I got is a ludicrous one. Does KDE Connect work on mainframes? Uh, probably yes, actually, because the way that KDE Connect works is that it engages with the system through the portals and then it will just do the things. But you're probably not going to get what you expect doing it. Oh, and Troy clarifies it's still broken in Apple, but it'll probably be fixed in Apple 10. <laughs> I hope there's no more reasons for it to stay broken at that point. Yep. So that's a great question. So the question was, in the past, uh, there, was, there were people who contributed by 
installing and testing beta releases and, and, and that sort of thing? And is there a process for that now? Um, we used to have one. It kind of broke during our transition from five to six. We probably need to set that up again. Feel free to file a ticket on the Fedora KD SIG tracker and we can actually make sure we, we start setting that stuff back up. There was two separate processes before. There was a copper repo for the regular people, for the regular spin users, and then there was, uh, there was uh, Kinoite nightly images that were composed from that copper repo for people that used Kinoite instead uh, to be able to do those tests. I personally ran Rawhide nightlies with the, with, uh, with the nightly snapshot builds from copper for like, I don't know, eight months. So it, most of the time it's fine. Sometimes it gets a little glitchy, but I have a dedicated laptop that I just throw that crap on and go see what happens. And, uh, and it's fun because uh, I have way too many old computers that are actually functional enough to do this, so I can just throw them on random ones and, and see what happens. Yes? You mentioned that the community grew largely, I don't know, 2000, 2001? Uh, you, 20, uh, 2020 and 2021, yeah. Yeah. What would you say is the active number in the SIG right now? 14. So it doubled. Yeah. So I put the number in there. I didn't, I didn't call it out too much. I should have. Uh, da, 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 da. 14 core members, 10 contributing members. And that is the state of as of right now in 2024. So... He's a core member because he's actually a member of KD SIG itself. So the 14 core members are the people that are a member of the KD SIG group that's in Pagger. The 10 contributing members are everyone else that works and helps us that aren't in there, which is largely like KD developers and, and things like that. Like, so in the Fedora KD room, we have a whole pile of just KD developers that are there that like help us. We also have um, just other people and stuff, users and things like that. We don't differentiate in our room between user and developer and whatever. We just ask that you remain on topic and that you be cordial and nice. If you don't do those things, you will get kicked out. Uh, we are very aggressive about kicking people out who, who don't follow those rules because otherwise it turns into a crap fest and I don't really want to deal with it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, anything else? All right then, thank you.